I have a Monty. I have a Zoa. Monty Zoa. Ugh. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I promise I'll never do that to you again. I thought it was uh, was gonna be pretty funny. Thought I'd throw it in there. I just wanted to give you a quick two-week update, though, on how my Harlequin shrimp's been doing and a couple other things. As you can see um, and tell from the first couple videos, there are no starfish on my front glass. Maybe a couple here and there, but it has drastically reduced. I mean, you you don't see nearly as many. And it's only been two weeks, and I haven't even seen him since the first couple days. So he's obviously in there doing what he's supposed to be doing, though. So. Yeah, I talked about um, bringing my bird's nest down and I wanted to see if it'll kind of change back to a pink color in a lower light setting and lowering the tank. As you can see that little spot there was turning uh, pink so I don't know if that was from kind of a shaded area from where it was before or if it's actually going to uh, start turning back pink but I can only hope. Um, kind of as I scan through the tank you will see some uh, starfish, the string of stars uh, everywhere. Um, I still do have a ton in there and that shrimp still has a lot of work to do uh, so we'll see so I watched a video by Bobby at Kush Coral showing how to put how he put seaweed in his tanks and I thought I would give it a shot as you can see I rolled it up I didn't roll it up quite as tight as he said you should but I really just wanted to give it a shot and I am telling you right now that has been in the tank twice as long as it normally would have been um, even at this point, it's barely even gone. So, um, you know, give it a shot. Check out his videos. You know, he's got a lot of good information, a lot of awesome videos, and uh, it's well worth a check out. Quick disclaimer, there is some uh, offensive languages to some people, and the videos may not be suitable for work, depending on where you work, I guess. But, um, you know, check them out. It's worth a, worth a shot for sure. So I did just do, um, you know, that water change, and the water seems uh, really clean. Coral's happy, fish are happy, and I, I do that every two weeks. Yeah, whether it's every two weeks on a Friday, every two weeks on that Saturday, it happens every two weeks. Um, this blue acropora that I had had fallen off its frag plug somehow, so I ended up having to glue it back down. And this is what I use. I use this crazy glue, gel glue. It has to be gel. This is what I've always used. Um, I have tried some dollar store stuff, but it doesn't work nearly as well. Um, regardless of whether I'm just gluing it to a rock, whether I'm gluing it to a frag plug, that's what I use, and it does work. The only thing is, that tube is usually only half full. What's up with that crazy glue? I don't know. Maybe you can uh, uh, get on here and, and, and tell us what's going on about that, but you know, it does work well. Um, give it a shot. It's inexpensive. Um, so, you know, well worth a try for sure. So, yeah, as you can see, everybody's happy. Uh, starfish are diminishing. Can't uh, be more ecstatic. Uh, I'm really happy. I wish I would see that um, shrimp a little bit more, that Hollywood shrimp. But after doing some research and talking to some uh, people that I know, they, they said, yeah, that shrimp is, is probably going to be rarely seen. Uh, it's probably going to hide for the most part. So that's okay. I'm okay with that uh, as long as he's doing what I bought him for. Uh, and then also, like I said, I will probably end up rehoming him. You know, when my stars are done, I don't want to uh, chop up starfish to feed him. Really, I only bought them for those extreme starfish, so as soon as they're gone, and I know they're gone, uh, I'll probably just rehome them to somebody who either wants to feed them or has the same starfish for them. I ended up moving this brain, this blue uh, moon brain over, because it was getting too close to that frog spawn. He was reaching out and almost touching them, and I don't want to know which one is going to win over that war, because I like both of them. So I just move them over to the left. It actually looks like it's been there forever, so it works out pretty perfectly. As you can see, a couple new heads here on my frog spawn. Are that neon color. I don't know if it's just because they're uh, new heads and that's what it does, or if possibly it was being shaded by my flower petal Monty. I um, ended up fragging it out a little bit and allowing more light to get down to that frog spawn. So we'll, we'll see. I'll give you an update to see if that color changes to that dark green color with those purple heads. 
only time will tell. So, um, uh, it's feeding time, and I wanted to kind of show you how I did that. This is uh, frozen mysis, frozen brine, and a little bit of mixed food from Rod's Foods. I think it's out of Illinois. Go ahead and check it out. It's um, awesome food. It has a bunch of stuff for anything and everything you have in aquarium. So, lots of options. So, as you can see, I thaw it out and mix it all up. Um, I lay it flat to refreeze it very thin, and then I break it up in those little chunks. I just toss them into that cup. I mix a little bit of tank water into it to allow it to thaw. Um, I know I told you I didn't uh, spot feed, and I don't spot feed, but I did just get this from a friend uh, not too long ago at a, a really cheap price, not the price on the front of the bag. Um, but Reef Blizzard, it's worth a try, I think. Um, you know, it comes with this tiny little scooper. And that scoop says it's for uh, 20 gallons per scoop. You want to put the 20 gallons per scoop. I put it right in with my frozen food and my tank water um, to allow it to sit. It was instructions say let it sit for five minutes at a time to uh, soak up the water and just get um, distributed throughout the tank. I guess butter allows the, the coral to eat it better. But with that scoop, uh, that bag will last me forever. I'm telling you, I'm dosing for 180 gallons and I haven't even made a dent in that bag. So as you can see, I just put it in there, I stir it up and I just let it sit for about five minutes. And then when I, it's time to feed, I um, just dump a little bit of food each side of my tank and high flow areas to allow that food to get spread out, allow all my fish to um, get a chance to get that mysis and the brine and, and all the stuff that's in there. And then I alternate back and forth. I'm telling you my copper banded butterfly, he uh, knows what's going to go on. Everybody's on the other side of the tank still trying to eat the food that's kind of floating around and he swaps sides. He'll, he'll go over there and wait for me to, to hit the other side. Um, I only put a little bit on each side. I don't allow too much food to settle or sink. You know, I'm only putting enough in there to allow my fish to eat it. And those two chunks that I put in there, that's quite a bit of frozen food. So what I do is I set that off to the side and I allow it um, you know, to sit. I'll feed like about every half hour for the next two hours until that's gone. Again, only allowing enough food for the fish to eat it. It's not settling in the bottom of the tank and it's, it's definitely not overfeeding um, the tank at all. That's why I don't really have any algae problems. You know, a lot of people probably look at this and be like, man, that's a lot of food, what is he doing? But this is how I've been doing it and this is what's working for me. Again, I haven't used that reef blizzard for a very long time, maybe a half a dozen times or so. Um, but, you know, I haven't, I haven't noticed any spikes in ammonia or nitrates or phosphates or anything it works out good I got these um, light diffusers from Home Depot they are awesome you know I've had some grasses jump out of my tank and stuff like that and I've had some store shops tell me hey the only fish that is not gonna jump is, is a dead fish so that's pretty much tells you that hey guess what any fish you have in your tank has the potential to jump out of your tank and I need to invest my protect my investment. I have, you know, the naso tang in there. I have that bomini tang in there. Those are some expensive fish, so I definitely don't want them jumping out of my tank. So that's pretty much what I got for you this week, guys. Uh, feel free to like, subscribe, share, um, do all that stuff. I'm hoping to possibly do some coral giveaways in the future. 